We recently reviewed Spider-Man 2 because we've been falling in love with everything that's been happening with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Tom Holland as Spider-Man, Infinity War, Endgame, so it made sense to go back to the early 2000s and just reevaluate the original trilogy with Spider-Man starring Tobey Maguire. And then, what do you know, you post an episode about Spider-Man 2 and all of a sudden everything breaks loose, Sony and Disney don't necessarily love each other, and things are still contractually work in progress, but as it stands, it does seem like Spider-Man is no longer going to be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we thought we talked about we talk about this as fans on a cast of the past. We publish a brand new episode every Sunday night, but this is not your traditional episode. It's more of a quick reaction to what's happening. So my name is Juan Velas. I am joined from Boston, Massachusetts by Ryan McNulty. Ryan, uh, what did you think about this knowing that we've had a variation of Spider-Man's actors playing Spider-Man? But this is not about that. We still have Tom Holland, but here's yet another obstacle for the Spidey sense man that can't seem to catch a break. Yeah, something with when Spider-Man 3 could happen, there's always some sort of disaster one way or the other, I guess. Uh, yeah, initially I was super disappointed to hear about this just because they've been on a roll with these past two Spider-Mans along with Spider-Man's just general involvement with the MCU. I think Tom Holland, as of now, is the best Spider-Man that we've seen and it's been so much fun. So to hear this news, obviously, a lot of people are going to be devastated because, you know, two great standalone movies and then the Avengers and Captain America movies that he's been involved in have been so amazing that it is just a huge disappointment. From London, Ontario, Keith Posha. Keith, in your case, are you concerned about what could possibly happen in the event that this this is a, a, a breakup and then Spider-Man's yeah. by himself? Absolutely. I'm one of those people that are devastated by this because it felt like we finally got that real good Spider-Man uh, with the debut in Civil War and then Homecoming, which is a great movie. I still haven't seen Far From Home, I'll admit that, but everything that they were doing with the Spider-Man character, it felt like a Homecoming where they finally did justice to this character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's really disappointing to see that they couldn't come to a contractual agreement, mostly because of that, but also because of the other implications that it applies. So for those that don't know, uh, we're not contractual experts, but just to recap, Sony and Marvel had reached an agreement a very long time ago where basically Sony had the rights to Spider-Man, the character, for the movies. But then Disney or Marvel had the rights for all the merchandising and things like that. And for the last couple of movies, including Homecoming and Far From Home, Disney only got a 5% uh, with the gross income for the movies, which is crazy, right? Just a very, very low amount, but they made all the money back in the merchandise. But now that we have Disney+, Plus, now that we see that Spider-Man is making a lot of money, Disney decided to add a little zero next to that five, and instead of having only 5%, it was 50%. Considering all the money that Spider-Man's making, it should be a surprise to nobody that Sony said, you know what? No. Why, why would I agree to that? If you guys were business owners, how would you react to something so insane? I understand that that is a like rational decision that Sony did, but at the same time, they were doing jack all with Spider-Man. Like, yeah, I get that he's super popular now, but you can't really argue the fact that Disney slash Marvel, the MCU, is what made Spider-Man that popular because those other movies just didn't do it before the last run of Spider-Man movies. So even like, yeah, it's great that they got Spider-Man back. But after this, if replaced by the MCU, I don't know if they're going to be able to recapture that magic. And that's the part that's most disappointing to me, because it felt like Spider-Man finally had his place. And now it's gone. As a fan, it's disappointing. Trying to understand business, I totally get it. The world is surrounded by money. It's all and about the people money. want more yeah. money. Greed knows no bounds, and Disney owning about 40% of the entire movie industry just isn't enough for them. You know, they, they make all the money from all these other Marvel movies. I totally, I understand Sony's position on this, and I really don't blame them at all, because at the end of the day, this is their baby, and, and they get a 
they they need to make their money from this and disney's got a billion other things that they can make money from and yeah unfortunately greed is gonna be what could possibly end this relationship uh that's just the name of the game i suppose um there's a chance someday that a deal can be made you know it's not completely over yet we'll we'll see what happens but it's looking very unlikely that some sort of deal is going to be reached all right and beyond that the uh my pie in the sky dream from this whole spider-man thing was that maybe something like that could happen with the X-Men one day because that's been one of the biggest uh, the biggest missing pieces from Marvel Studios and the MCU is that they kind of skirt around the existence of the X-Men, uh, especially with like Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver back in uh, Avengers 2. And this kind of takes that off the table at the same time. And this is another thing that Sony's not doing all that much with. Like, hey, Logan was all right, but all of the other x-men's before that were kind of hot garbage since like x-men 2 so this that implication it kind of takes it off the table as well in my opinion and that's probably the most heartbreaking part of all of it to me yeah and, and in the world of video games i've recently been playing marvel ultimate alliance 3 and it's marvel ultimate alliance 3 and the first two people that you see are wolverine and spider-man so it's incredible that in the movie universe, it's Captain America, Iron Man, and the gang. But in the video games, they're very much like the second or third place. And it's it's difficult for us because I remember we did an episode a little while back where we reacted to Endgame and all that. And our excitement level for the evolution of, well, Iron Man's out, but Spider-Man's. And like Spider-Man could be the new Tony Stark. We talked about that. And having that be removed like... Personally, I don't think that the Spider-Man movies are doomed. I think that the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, they got to do something because I feel like they were banking so hard on the Spider-Man character towards the end because the emotional attachment that he had with Tony Stark and everything. Do you think that on the MCU side, there is something that can be salvaged in the event that Spider-Man is not part of it? And then on the flip side, here's an interesting question for you both. Is there a positive side to the Spider-Man situation? They are kind of in trouble, right? So I, I think they have to rely on basically Black Panther and Captain Marvel probably have to kind of carry the torch now if they're going to do future Avengers movies. I mean, we can see if the, popularity... The Guardians of the Galaxy say hello. Yeah, yeah but... Still, I do see uh, what's what's his name, uh, ca like carrying the torch as the Captain America or Iron Man of the Avengers, uh, Quill. Uh, I don't yeah. really see. I don't really see that to be honest with you. I, I feel like it's either going to be Captain Marvel or um, who did I? Black Panther is who I said before. Because I mean, it seems like you know we still got Chris Hemsworth as Thor, but he's not going to be as involved from from what I can tell. So MCU, I think they're in a lot more trouble. Um, the positive side for Spider-Man, um, I think the only positive I can really think of is Spider-Man 3 could just be kind of distraction free. Um, you know, they've implemented MCU a lot in these first two movies, but, you know, if they just tell a really personal story about Spider-Man, it could actually benefit the series. Um, it could be a, you know, assuming... I think there's... I, did he sign on for two more? I don't know. I think at the very least, we're going to get Spider-Man 3. I know that. Yeah, but they could yeah. tell a much more personal story of Spider-Man 3. So having nothing else involved with the MCU could actually benefit it um, in a way of just having this very honed-in story, just solely focusing on Spider-Man and telling a really interesting story. Because um, certainly, without saying any spoilers, Far From Home left it open to tell a very interesting story. It's not going to have the Disney Marvel magic behind it. Just look at... I. The, the troubling part, I mean, yes, there's going to be a Spider-Man 3. It could be great. All of this worrying could be for nothing. But going by the track record of 
the superhero movies from that side of the field over the last 10 years, that's where the trouble kind of kicks in for me. Like, you know what? They're still going to have uh, Spider-Man could be great, like I said. But if you look at things like the X-Men movies, if you look at those god-awful Fantastic Four movies, it doesn't leave a lot of room for hope. And that's it's it's worrying because, yes, they have all that goodwill that the Disney MCU built on Spider-Man's character, but it could all get flushed down the toilet because this movie is going to kind of like, it's going to be picked apart no matter what they do. And I'm going to be one of those people picking it apart because of that, uh, because of that separation. And I don't, it's going to be tough for me to find a good thing to come out of it. I, I just don't see it. And as far as the MCU, honestly, yeah, it sucks. They don't have their main guy that they were building it around, but It'll be okay. It's D23 this weekend. They just announced a ton of new projects for the oh, MCU. Yeah. So they're going to find a sidestep to make I everything mean, no, okay here. Regardless, the money is going to start to dip. Whether Spider-Man was going to be there or not. Endgame, it's true. Endgame was a turning point, And it's going to take a while for them to build back up to the popularity that they're almost starting from. They're not starting from zero, but they're going to have to pretty close with yeah, everything. They're, yeah, they're they're starting from 10 and got to build up to 100 again. You know, it's interesting what Disney's going to do once we get Disney Plus. So we do have those series because with a television series or I guess a digital online series, you can easily work around stuff like this because eventually you can uh, include a character, right? Special episode or something. But because a movie, it's a one-shot deal, right? Here's Endgame. Here's Infinity War. I think there's a higher demand and expectation for a character to be there in. So who knows if down the line, not so much for Spider-Man, but just other Marvel cinematic characters as a whole, like... I think that the television or episodic content is going to be a little bit more healthy for this. And it prevents burnout. Because with the movie, you always got to have each character. Whereas with the television shows, you can catch a bit of a break. But we wanted to be able to do this because we recently talked about Spider-Man 2 with uh, Tobey Maguire. We are going to be talking about Spider-Man 3 in the very near future. So if you haven't, consider subscribing to our podcast feed on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, wherever you check out podcasts, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. And above everything, whether it be on YouTube in the comments or on social media, let us know what you thought about this. What was your live reaction as you saw that it wasn't April 1st? This is not a joke. The MCU and Spider-Man are perhaps splitting up because anything could be possible. So stay tuned because pretty soon we are going to be celebrating 1999, talking about our favorite video games in a particular episode. And then afterwards, we're going to be talking about them movies. So up until next time, thank you for watching and listening. And we will be back with another exciting episode of a cast to the past. I love you, Keith. Don't don't split, man. Where's You're contractually my obligated. Spider-Man?